Hello Hellions. I'm going to do a video I did back in October. Some of you have seen this video. The reason I um, deleted it was because every time I would go look at my YouTube uh, account and um, check out all the bells and the whistles and the subscribers and the times viewed and how much time is being used up by viewership, um, two videos would pop up. One that was already downloaded or uploaded and um, the other one was constantly trying to upload. So I thought to myself, well, I don't need this other one if it uploads. So I deleted it and ended up deleting the whole thing. So I'm going to go ahead and redo this one because I, I always thought this was, a, was one of my better videos. <clears throat> so, let's get on to the spiel, or the spiel. Imagine this. The musical landscape of the 1970s. Disco was queen. Big arena rock shows put on by bands like the Eagles and Fleetwood Mac, <clears throat> REO Speedwagon, Journey, Styx, Rush, even the, uh, the uh, Gods of Thunder themselves, Kiss, that was king. The vitality of, of rock and roll was, was gone from the 1960s and the 1950s. The punk rockers were in their infancy. The heavy metalers were in their infancy. They were bringing back the 1960s and the 1950s and that vitality. Of course, the heavy metal guys would go, later go on into the 80s and put on big arena rock shows, but hey, they were way more fun. Um, so by the end of the 1970s, Everything is everything is changing. The, the paradigm is, is shifting. And again, like I said, punk rock and heavy metal was in its infancy. And uh, all the all the major artists who were coming, who came out of the 60s, they were beginning to change, too. And artists like David Bowie, Lou Reed, uh, Iggy Pop and one of my favorite all time favorite artists, Alice Cooper. <clears throat> you know, David Bowie would, would get rid of the Starman persona, and he was gearing up for the technological age of the 1980s and the capitalism that, brought, that was coming along with it. Uh, Lou Reed kind of went into a, a more beat poet, songwriter persona, and sort of uh, dressed up as a typical New Yorker. He was getting rid of the spaced out, junky persona. Um, Iggy Pop didn't change a whole lot, but he, uh, not his image anyway, but he was getting away from a lot of the, uh, the, the really rough punk rock garage rock uh, mentality of the Stooges and some of his early solo work. And uh, he was starting to play more rock and roll songs, songs like Wild One, Lust for Life. Um, and then Alice, in the beginning, was a, uh, in the 60s, he was a, uh, a Frank Zappa-obsessed drag queen who was uh, portraying sort of like the life and the antics of the real Alice Cooper witch, which he derives his name from. He would later go on to do the vaudevillian shock rock show that we all know and love today, and that's, that's the show he still does today. He would later go back to that in the 1980s with more of a heavy metal sound. But for a brief moment in time, in the late 1970s, like the rest of these artists, they, they he, all these guys started really changing the way they look and the way they sound. 
And this record, Lace and Whiskey, is a grossly overlooked record. Um, and for a brief moment of time, Alice donned the persona of a private investigator. It's kind of a, sort of a concept record, really. And the idea behind this was that he was a private investigator in a an economically depressed town, kind of like Detroit, St. Louis, Cleveland, Baltimore. Um, going around solving crimes, meeting up with damsels in distress, and uh, singing songs about a uh, very working class, rugged, hot, cold town that can't keep up with its uh, city, you know, city employees, cops, fire department, taxes. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go ahead and listen to this. Again, it's a... Uh, it's one of those albums of his that is not hardly ever mentioned. And a lot of people, even diehard Alice Cooper fans, I mean, don't aren't familiar with this. <clears throat> well, I take that back. Diehard Alice Cooper fans are familiar with it. That's why I have it. But um, your average run-of-the-mill Alice Cooper fan or rock and roll fan or heavy metal fan usually isn't familiar with this really brief error of Alice Cooper. So uh, let's listen to it and see what uh, see what you guys think.
All right. <clears throat> That's all you get. By the record, if you want to hear the whole thing. But it's a, it's a great record. He only did that for a year, maybe two. Um, I think he came out with a, Special Forces might have been after this. I don't, and that was another really strange record he put out before you. He went right back to the uh, vaudevillian King of Shock Rock uh, stage show and persona. But it's just, you know, the 1970s, especially the end of the 1970s, is, is a very interesting time for music and, and rock and roll in general. I mean, even country music was starting to get kind of dancey and disco y, you know, with. Uh, I don't know, Saddle Tramp by Charlie Daniels was a huge album when I, you know, in that time period, and that's such a strange country record. But I hope you liked it. Um, Alice is one of my favorite, all-time favorite artists of all time, and um, I'm happy that I could share that with you. Uh, so, cheers. Have a good one, people. <laughs>